big beard. Hey, Kayla. Hi, Ayana. <laughs> Welcome to Fill in the Blank Podcast. Welcome. Um, Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Fill in the Blank Podcast. Fill in the Blank. Man, we've been gone. You keep on feeling like we haven't been gone, but I we've been gone. I've just spent so much time with you over the last week, right. like, but not for the podcast. Right, right. We haven't recorded since two weeks Two ago. weeks before the wedding. Oh, two weeks before? The week before the wedding, oh, we did right, 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 right. No, you're right. So two weeks before the wedding was the last time we recorded the podcast. Okay. That was a long time ago. I guess so, yeah. That was like three weeks ago. Oh, okay. Okay, then yeah, it's been a while. Wow. What's up, y'all? We missed you. Did you guys miss us? They're like, nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Like, F y'all. <laughs> y'all keep leaving us. Okay, we're back in for real now because the wedding has happened we are moving forward. No more distractions. No more distractions. Things have are or should be slowing down. We hope so. We hope. Dear God, please. No, I think things are actually about to slow down. Now. Okay. So and it's we, about to be winter. Yes. So I'm definitely not. It's doing in the house thing. season. Yeah. And I got my rah rah out. I just want to be. About your rah rah. I did. I got my rah rah out. I'm so glad. I just. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I mean I haven't left my house in days. Okay. Today is the first day. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh wow. How's it feeling after? I was like, wow, am I back? Is this me? Am I back? You're back. I'm back. I mean, it's you and it's better you. Questionable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know about that. One. Okay, let's update them. Okay, update. Well, you are no longer a single technical woman now that girl is married <laughs> eyes married now she's married i was married now the wedding was great it was literally perfect Yay. by this time because i posted today the video mm -hmm. on my page mm -hmm. and so i saw some of the fitb fam um comment and they saw the video so if you are interested in seeing the video you could go to my instagram and check it out but yes it was literally the perfect day i was the most chill bride in bride history i didn't stress about anything i love that for you i was really shocked about that because you know that that's not my typical characteristic i think ariel said something to me she was like kayla i she did she was like you are is marcus screaming he's singing <laughs> oh my god Anyways, but Ariel's like, you are the chillest bride I have ever seen. I was so calm. Yeah. And I really love that, like, even the coordinator, when she was handling stuff, like, she would tell people, like, Kayla's going to go with the flow. I'm mm. like, wow. Like, That's that makes I me so off. happy that that is what I'm giving. Yeah. That makes me no, so happy. No, you were very calm. Yeah. But I think you had done enough stress, stressing, like, during the planning period. Mm. It's like, all right, today's the day. And I trusted everybody, too. Yeah. Like, all the people that were taking care of everything. So, yeah. I didn't really have anything And people were taking about. care of everything, mm -hmm. for sure. Because all my flowers died the morning of the wedding. Yeah, I know. I heard them uh, immediately calling, like, people, like, all right, where can we get some fresh roses? Like, yeah, yeah. all my flowers died. And I was like, mm, well... Yeah. Flowers dead or not, we're going to have to go on. The day must go on. Right. So, yeah, but we had a great time. Everybody else was up till like five o'clock in the morning. I went to bed. I don't know what everybody else was doing. I went to sleep. I what, went to the day room. of or the, the night of the wedding? Oh. The night of the wedding, everybody was up. I know that my dad and my stepmom, their room was ridiculous. They had the presidential suite. So they were hosting everybody there. My cousin Richard ordered like 72 uh burgers from white castle and they were good i was sleeping all of this was them happening. white castle burgers were so hit and i was I'm like oh this is perfect absorb <laughs> some alcohol i'm just so happy that everybody had a good time we did have a really good time yeah it was a nice little big celebration it was it beautiful was. it was great it was beautiful i loved it okay what's going on with you life update oh uh i mean not much nothing no not really nothing I mean, you want to share Oh, uh, oh my god um <laughs> what well we could go into 
just kind of maybe what we were talking about before we started recording oh. about like how we both have been doing emotionally mm. um since the last time we recorded because i think we're both in very strange emotional states right now yeah but i don't think i think this has been like months in the making mm. for me but i think uh, you know, <laughs> it reminds me of like are you tired yet ayana mm. and i think i'm finally getting to a point where i'm i'm well i won't even say I'm, i've been tired the entire time but i think i've just been simply coping mm-hmm. um and i'm at the point where i'm just ready for a shift yeah uh, i'm tired of kind of being in this space of just feeling wildly uncomfortable with myself because I don't know who I am anymore Mm -hmm. Uh, just because so much has changed and just like a lot of my perspectives have changed and this just like is not who I'm used to being so I'm like who is this new woman and where is this stuff coming from I mean I know where it's coming from but but like even still I'm like this is somehow the happiest I've ever been because of the all the fulfilling friendships I've had but also the most confused I've ever been because every other aspect of my life feels just very up in the air kind of hazy d- hazy yeah. like there's no clarity whatsoever and it's just mm-hmm. uncomfortable it's the duality it's the duality life. yeah how it can al- be the happiest but also the most confusing point in your life yeah and i feel like we're a lot of like in kind of how we're both feeling right now because i'm experiencing the same thing mm. of like wow obviously this is a very happy point in my life mm. i feel great about like my relationships in my life and like I just got married and that's great but in terms of like my career life and just like me feeling like I have a good idea about who I am and my identity Mm -hmm. that feels very confusing right now Mm -hmm. I don't really feel very connected to myself Mm -hmm. and I feel very um very much like there's some type of shift that's going on inside of me that I haven't really got a grasp of yet um, a lot of different parts of my personality that used to be like the main pieces of me, I feel like are kind of like shedding from me. Bro, facts. I'm just like, wow, who is this person? Bro, I don't, I don't facts. know. <laughs> I used to have such a, a softness to me. Um, and now I, I feel like I've been, but, but I feel like in some ways this is positive. Like I'm, I'm protecting myself more, but, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm sometimes just hardened yeah. and I'm like, this is not me. Like I've always been like a strong lover girl. I've always been such a like positive, see the best in people kind of girl. And now now I'm like the complete opposite mm-hmm. most of the time where I'm like, ew. Yeah, <laughs> like, like who ew. is this? So do you feel like those are qualities in yourself that you actually want back? Like things that you truly want to represent or are you feeling like these these shifts and changes happen for a good reason? And I think that I want to take on these characteristics. I think, I think they happen for a good reason. However, I think... I'm living the extreme of it. I mm-hmm. want to find the balance of like being able to see people for who they are, mm-hmm. accept that and not take it personally, mm-hmm. not feel it personally and mm-hmm. just be able to walk away. Yeah. But I'm at a point where it's hard for me to look at, okay, I'm going to men specifically. I I am, I don't want to say, well, jaded. Mm-hmm. I am jaded in a way yeah. for me to look at men and just be like, what is wrong with the, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? is wrong like with looking y'all. it through a, looking at men through a lens of kind of like pessimism yeah. instead of optimism instead or of like optimism. feeling connected and understanding or empathy yeah i i like have no empathy for men right now mm-hmm. and that's just not me because for people in general i can have empathy for mm-hmm. anybody i could have empathy for but now i'm like ill mm-hmm. like just ill but you <laughs> another thing that i think is feeding into it is what I've been consuming. Yeah. Like a lot of what I've been consuming. As soon Man. as I recognized that I was angry, um, I started consuming media that fed into that anger because I felt validated. Yep. You want you want to watch and listen to things that feel like you can relate yeah. to those things. And that, it's like the same thing what people do with music. Yeah. Like when you're sad, you yeah. listen to sad songs instead of listening to the things that can help shift your focus. Yeah. It's, it's hard to do it the other way. And around. I'm a wallower. Yeah. So like, so if I want to feel, but that's another, I'm not typically a very angry person either. So this is a very new, a very, very new thing for me. Mm -hmm. Even when it comes down to like 
people who have truly, truly hurt me in the past, like I can look at them and 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 still have no anger for them. Mm -hmm. For some strange reason, though, when it comes to Boo Boo the Fool <laughs> is where it's shifted for me. And I'm yeah. like, why is that? Because like at the end of the day, in retrospect, compared to all of my other relationships, it wasn't as like deep. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't as so why. But am it's I also the gravity. I think that this is a very different situation for you in terms of the fact that, like, number one, when you have the gravity of the word marriage, yeah. of the the union of marriage attached to something, it brings into play a totally different emotion that yeah. would be in play for just a relationship. And I think it's also the other side of it that you have this extreme sense of visibility that you didn't have in other relationships. Yeah. So if it was something that you could have kind of like processed and went through I on your own- I think it would have been easier for it me to been do that easier. privately. Yeah, it would have been way easier. Yeah. What the? But because you're in a position where- you're trying to understand your emotions, but then you also have people picking at you and pointing the finger at your emotions as well. It kind of creates this sense of like, you're angry at them because it's like, God damn it, shut up. And then you're also angry with pieces of yourself like, oh, well, now you're pointing out things that I might feel insecure about or things that I didn't even look at in myself and mm -hmm. you're saying it, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think about that reel that just went viral about me talking about unconditional love. And I mean, I told you this that I think I mean, I still hold that viewpoint. I think the perspective is a very I mean, it's a very valid perspective. I I've been affirmed multiple times, but even I was talking to my therapist about it and I was like, is that a jaded perspective? She's like, No, I think relationships should have conditions. She was like, that's how people end up in like really unhealthy things when they don't have conditions. And I think that that's the thing. People Okay. Number one, when we have situations like this where clips go viral, mm. people are listening to such a small snippet of our full conversation. Facts. That's number one. Facts. Number two, uh, like people are projecting onto you mm. and onto us when we both have situations where it might go viral is like, oh, like this is what I've been told my whole life or they're in unhappy situations where they have they have stayed in situations longer than what they should have, mm -hmm. regardless of the fact of it of it being marriage or not. There should still be conditions. Mm -hmm. And even in your vows, there are conditions. Those are conditions. Like love is very much conditional, but I don't think people like it being put in that in that way because then it makes it seem pessimistic. But it's not. It's not. It it's just, not. It's just is stating it for what it is because what people were commenting and I was reading the comments, mm -hmm. I'm like, but those are still conditions. Mm -hmm. Like y'all are saying, even if you leave the relationship and you continue to love the person, like you're loving them unconditionally. But my thing is at a certain point, when you leave a relationship, the love should not continue on even from a distance to that capacity. Mm -hmm. Like you can have care for someone like, oh, okay, like respect. Yeah, you can have respect for them. But to say that you still love them, like what if you move on and you get in a whole new relationship, you gonna still love somebody else unconditionally that you were with years ago? Yeah. So there were several points that I think I realized after the fact while I was reading everyone's comments, because I was reading everyone's comments. Um, people were arguing about like the same thing. Number one, it was faith. People kept arguing about faith. Um, and I'm like, okay, not everyone lives by your faith. You can't expect everyone to live by that. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was people were arguing about semantics. So it's like what unconditional love is and what it isn't. Mm -hmm. And then another thing is, is like for people who are saying like, oh, you can love someone someone unconditionally but like my, the relationship is conditional to me love is action it's actionable if you're not mm -hmm. with that person anymore and you're not actively actively loving, actively them. loving them and yeah. choosing them to me that's not actual love it's but not. again that's it's, just semantic yeah it's it's the way that you choose to phrase it yeah. because it's like you're saying the same thing but you're saying it in a different way yeah you know? i think the issue is with a lot of what's going on in media right now is again people see what they see it either affirms them or it it, it turns them off from the idea but <laughs> people don't know how to truly have conversation because i think in order to have a good conversation with someone you need to be asking questions yeah so i could see if some people were like oh i mean i hear what you're saying Ayana. i don't agree but like what do you mean by this specific piece of what you said? But like, there's none of that that's happening because mm -hmm. that's not what social media is anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not to connect anymore. No. It's just to like, rah, it's, rah. it's quick. It's quick. It's microwavable. And so like people watch these snippets, like 
I was just saying, like they they're watching it, mm. but they're not using this to say, oh, let me let me actually, this is an interesting take. Let mm-hmm. me see the rest of what they're talking about. How did they get to this point? You know. Yeah. So if you're listening to such a small piece of what somebody is saying, like of course you could take it and you could twist it and do whatever you want to do with you're it. You're gonna hear what you want to hear. You're gonna hear what you want from your hear. own viewpoint. And some people are just like that in general. Yeah. So even if they did watch the whole thing, they might make up their own ideas yeah. about whatever because yeah. people are that way. Um, nonetheless, I said that and I know the perspective is valid. However, I think the source of it and where it did come from is just like, uh, anger. Mm. Well, experience, yes, but experience that resulted in anger. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's a, but the thing is like, that's the state that you're in right now is yeah. feeling anger. But at the end of the day, once you grow past that, the perspective is still valid it's still and it's valid. still, still going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> it's still going to be there. It's still going to be there. And I think that it really, the root of it really is the experience. It Right now, the emotion is anger, but emotions are temporary. That's fact. So the root of it is from the experience that you have had previously that has made you realize, oh my goodness, um, yeah, love is not at all unconditional because I can't stay in something mm-hmm. longer than its expiration date when I'm the only one giving or mm-hmm. it is not cohesive for us as a unit anymore, yeah. you know? Yeah. I was also explaining, I can't remember who it was, but, um, I was adding, Oh, my friend, my friend, uh, Reggie, mm-hmm. uh, he loves to debate, loves to argue. Um, and we were talking about that viewpoint and I had to add more context. Like, me saying that is coming from a woman who was raised in a religion where you're taught like you love that man regardless, mm-hmm. like regardless of what he does. That is your husband. You stand by him. That is your divorce is not an option. Mm-hmm. So like the ooh, the shame that I felt, mm-hmm. even when I considered leaving him and when I felt valid enough to leave him, even then I kept questioning and asking my mom, asking Natalie, like, is this enough for me to leave? Like, is it okay for me to leave at this point? Because it doesn't feel like enough mm-hmm. because like divorce isn't an option. Yeah. And I'm like, at what point am I allowed to walk away? Mm-hmm. Because I felt extreme shame for that, for simply yeah. like, wanting to leave. And like you said, that just comes from the root of your previous experiences. And Mm -hmm. it's not because ending a relationship that's not healthy for you is shameful because it's never shameful. Anybody out there that is in that situation, it's not shameful to leave something that doesn't serve you anymore. But I think that a lot of just how we are socialized in general in life attaches shame to ending a relationship. But people don't, put their attention into the detail of all that goes into creating a relationship that is actually sustainable. Like Mm. people get comfortable in, oh, there should be no reason to leave, especially when you get to the point of marriage. Like you'll never leave me. So I could treat you however I want to treat you. And that should never be what the solution is, is to just do whatever you want to do. The solution is for you to continue to date and learn and be an active participant in your relationship. So it doesn't get to the point that it would end, Mm -hmm. you know, because it can very well end. That's what I mean. That's the point of it being a partnership and it takes two working people. That's what that word means. Yeah. (laughs) Two working people committed to, to pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling until you can find your balance. But even then, like life will throw you off again. You push and pull, push and pull, find your balance. Like that's the point of a partnership. You know what? But the thing that I think that people really didn't put their attention into is the fact that you were not saying that people won't have ups and downs in relationships and love each other through that. You were talking more so about boundary setting in terms of, okay, if you hurt me or if you decide that you are not in, like you're not going to participate in this relationship yeah. or you're going to step out on me and choose to emotionally neglect me like, like those things like the really heavy things that actually breaks trust in a relationship and mm. severs the the vows and the commitment that you've made to one another that's yeah. what you're talking about yeah you're People not talking about conditions that. and they thought i was like talking about well, if you don't if you don't spend this amount of time mm-hmm. with me and you don't i'm like that's stupid shit no. i'm not talking about life's ups and downs i'm not talking about someone going through a hard time and not being able to really you know give what they are they're usually giving in a partnership i'm talking about 
heavy shit. Yeah, but that's the thing. Again, people that's project. That's when they project. That's people when they're projecting. And then, oh my God, the men. And, and that's what was making me angry. The men were just like, oh, see, this is why you can't take advice from... First of all, I was not giving advice. I was sharing an opinion. Yeah. I was Hello. simply sharing an opinion. I and think- for those of you talking about this is the reason why I don't listen to podcast, then don't. <laughs> then don't. <laughs> because it's like, shut up. <laughs> I really hate when people do that. Like... That people act like the only form of the only form of receiving knowledge or understanding of things is like, oh, like I have to listen to this pastor. Sometimes your pastors are jaded. Yeah. Pastors are people too. Hello. So just because somebody is sharing, there are people, if the message wasn't for you, let it not be for you. That, but there are that people <laughs> that by Ayana sharing her story, by me sharing my story, that it's going to connect to them and help them through something. If it was not meant for you, then keep it pushing. Don't If you don't listen to podcasts, then why are you commenting under a podcast clip? I think, I think people silly. are also used to like people who do have podcasts kind of having this idea of like, well, I have this podcast because I'm sharing wisdom. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what we signed this movie. And we never said we were experts. We <laughs> always say that we're not. We're not. We are not experts of life. We're just figuring it out. Yeah. And we're sharing our journey as we go. Navigating life together. So there may be things that we share or we feel in the moment that may shift because like I said, Feelings are temporary. That's Emotions like, are temporary. Y'all are watching me literally in the middle of an evolution. Like next year, I won't be in this space anymore. Exactly. And you'll be able to, but see, and this is also just something about social media. Yeah. Social oh, media, God. typically you see when people have reached this enlightenment almost mm-hmm. like you don't watch people through their journey because people don't share the rough parts they of their don't. journey. They choose to seclude when they're in the thick of experiences. But when you have people like me and you that are choosing to share when we're going through difficult times and we're being vulnerable and honest and saying, Hey, this is a hard time. Like I really don't have it figured out and I don't have the answers for you. Mm-hmm. Like that is a, we're coming from a totally different space versus trying to tell people what they should believe or what they should do. We're trying to help people feel seen. Yeah. Because even if you you are not in that space, somebody's in that space yeah. at that moment, you know? Right. So it's just the comments are irritating. <laughs> it's just shut up. <laughs> because it's like you could literally choose to not say anything. You could literally choose to disagree and keep scrolling. I just have never in my life seen something on social media that I disagree with. And I took the time out to comment under somebody's post to be rude and be negative. Like, yes, we could com- continue the conversation, but you should also be respectful because at the end of the day, it's real people behind these things. Like, it reminds me of there's this woman on um, TikTok. What's her name? I think it's like Destiny Anderson. It's Destiny something. And she talks a lot about uh, gentle parenting and uh, how she communicates with her daughter and how she parents is literally how I want to parent. I mm. love the way that she parents. Um, but she says this thing to her daughter. Her daughter is, I can't remember, but she's young, maybe like seven or something. Mm-hmm. And her daughter communicates very well because mm. she's done a very good job with helping her daughter do that um, and, and showing her communication skills like by example being an example Mm -hmm. um and she says this thing to her daughter where she says i can't hear your message through your mess Mm -hmm. and it reminds me i think of that every time i'm reading comments and i'm like okay let's say that that is the truth or your truth at the end of the day you want your message to be digestible so if you're being rude or if you're being if if your truth is hardened like i'm not gonna hear you Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna be offended exactly (laughs) i'm just gonna be mad that's the main point people don't know how to communicate with people it's i even think about that because we still get comments under the auntie nays oh um, yeah i see them clip and i'm just like y'all don't understand that you leading with your personal beliefs onto somebody else who is not in the space that you're in does not like you're not gonna say this and they're like oh i'm saved i'm not gay no more like what do you think is about to happen but that's a, okay okay and this is where it's like dangerous territory that's a scary thing about christians um but also that's what you're taught in christianity that like it is the truth there is no other truth there is a it's like a religion religious like superiority it's mm-hmm. like we are the truth so anything else that you put out there like it's inaccurate mm-hmm. so if you're not following exactly how i interpret this book 
you're wrong. Then you're wrong. Mm. And that's just so damaging. Like, it's, it's dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> it is, it's, it's dangerous it because is dangerous. it's just not... There it's, are a lot. I of can't things. hear your message to your mess, boo. <laughs> this is dangerous territory, but there are a lot of things in the Bible that are uh, based upon interpretation. And when you go to church and you choose to interpret things just based upon the way the pastor has preached it to you, but you also have not done the work to seek, truly seek God for yourself, mm -hmm. you're regurgitating information, you know, mm -hmm. in a way that just tries to put you on a pedestal. When your goal as a Christian, if you're a true Christian, true Christian, you <laughs> would <quotation>. want to <laughs> connect with other people to try to share God's light. But when you share messages that are harmful and dangerous and you share messages that put other people down and put you on a pedestal, mm -hmm. you're not sharing God's light. God's light to me, this is just me personally, God's light is love. I was going to say that. And all of the people that I know that are like the best Christians ever have never done that. They're not they're, pushy people. They're not pushy people. And they just represent God's light by being just themselves. Being. Just being. You don't have to condemn other people and put other people down. You don't have to call out their their their, their flaws. Their flaws <laughs> and tell them you're damned to hell because of this thing. Like the point is we all have flaws and we all sin. Like all of us, we all have things, you know? Yeah. So this level of perfection is not attainable. God is the only person that can reach that. So it's like, yes, it's it's a delicate balance of like giving grace while also being able to try to strive to be better. But what you might be striving to do in your lifetime versus somebody else are two totally different things. Like, also like... People, I think, hmm. I was talking to my therapist about this. I was like, my religious trauma is the only trauma I refuse to touch. Mm. Because once I do. It's so deep. Everything unravels. But Literally, that's the reason why you need to touch everything it. Everything unravels. That's exactly It's the why reason why it. I put such a high emphasis and, and value on marriage. Mm -hmm. It's the reason why. I believe Jared when he said, oh, God told me this and I prayed and like, cause I, what? Yeah. Uh, it's the reason why I felt shame to even leave the marriage. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's the reason why I live my life in extremes. Cause you can't be lukewarm. And mm -hmm. so I, I created this behavior of like, you know, being hot or being cold. Yeah. And it's created this pattern in myself. Yeah. It's the reason why shame is is the emotion that I feel for most things to keep me in check. Mm -hmm. And my therapist was like, I know, okay, let's say you don't want to feel shame anymore. What would you feel? And I'm like, I don't know. What do normal people feel? Like, yeah. What do you what do you even feel when you don't like how when you're do you, not how, shameful? How do norm, normal people keep themselves in check? How do normal people like because for me it's always been shame. Yeah. I think something bad, I feel shame. Yeah. I do something bad, I feel shame. Yeah. I feel you though. And I don't even have the extent of the religious trauma that you have, but I have it enough excuse me, that it's kept me literally caught up in shame. Um, mine, how yours is like religious trauma, mine is more attached to like sexual mm -hmm. trauma type of things, but it's still connected to religion mm -hmm. because I didn't grow up in the church constantly, but I went enough that I knew kind of like the ideals of Christianity and mm -hmm. who I am supposed to be and all of that stuff. And I always grew up feeling like, okay, well, if I'm not this level of this person, then it's not good enough. Yeah. And it keeps you, like you said, in these extremes of either hot or cold. It's like, I either have to be all in or be perfect, mm -hmm. or I'm just completely out because I can't be in the middle. Yeah. If I'm in the middle, I'm not good enough. Like, yeah. And it's, it's just chasing this level of perfectionism that just, to me, I have always felt like it just does not exist. Like, where is the... Humanity. Is, yeah, the humanity and the level of grace that is included in, and it, it's, it's not necessarily like the relationship with God, it's the people that are attached mm -hmm. to the relationship with God. Oh, Lord. that's why I always say like, Lord, I love you. I can't stand your people. Mm -hmm. 
I cannot stand and your it's, people. It's so sad, you know. I have been so back and forth about this whole thing of what I want my relationship to God, with God to look like right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been feeling pulled to having co- consistent community, which makes me feel like church is the route. Yeah. But then when I go to church immediately, I kind of feel this like shame attached to just my life in general. And it's like, I haven't even been, I don't know, like I'm not the the person that's had all these like crazy wrongs or things in my life, but it's just because of the fact that people feel so critical and so harsh. Like I don't feel grace and love to be welcomed in, you mm. know? And so it's made me kind of be like, oh my gosh, like is the community that I'm thinking that I need like just the community I've already built. Like we sit and we talk about God and we connect over spirituality, our relationship with God, maybe not the religious Mm -hmm. factor of it, but having connection with God. And this is part of my quarter life crisis right now that I'm trying to understand and feel better within myself because of the fact that it is just that whole religion aspect. It's heavy. It is heavy. It is very, very heavy. It is heavy. And I'm definitely in the middle. Of, I mean, I've been in I've been in a faith crisis. I think over the last decade, mm-hmm. but, but it's hitting its peak. Mm. And I've gotten to a point where I'm walking away from Christianity, and I'm just realizing like me getting to know God is not going to be through this route. Yeah, I love God. I know who God is for me, um, and I want to get to know Him more. I just don't want to do that through the lens of Christianity anymore. Yeah. I don't necessarily believe in the Bible anymore, mm. which is scandalous to say. <gasps> <I'd>, <gasps> like I just, I just don't. I don't believe in the people. I don't believe in the community. Um, even beyond, like, let's take away like the actual past hurt that I've had. When I look at the logistics of it, it's just like I don't. It's just not for me. Yeah. It's and then people, it's not for you, but it's still the truth. And that's I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Like, leave me alone. Leave me alone. It's your truth. It's not mine. Yeah. Um, I think there are several ways to get to know God, just like there are several languages to communicate. Like, and I think no that way people God have to put be... into this box like that. That's the part I have a hard time with. I mean, I, I respect all of the different ways that people get to know God. And I don't feel like Muslims or people who are Buddhist or- I don't think they're doing I don't think wrong. they're damned to hell because they don't- believe in God in the same way that I might, you know, Mm -hmm. like I believe in, I believe in the Bible, but I do acknowledge the historical aspects that there are things that have been shifted and changed and all of that stuff because of the fact that, uh, there, there's a lot of things in our history that have been wiped. Colonization. Um, Yeah. I also know this is the other side of things, but I also know that Uh, Black people and the way that we have connected with God has been stripped from us as well, Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And we now connect with God in the way that um, that white people were taught us Mm -hmm. to connect with God. Um, And even then, the Bible that was given to us was pages ripped out. Like, who knows what things have been ripped from it? So. I don't necessarily believe that it's not true, but I do think that sometimes the interpretations are taken to a little bit of an extreme. And I think that the Bible is a guideline for like your moral character Mm -hmm. more so. And I think that uh, it's a level of perfectionism that we're not meant to necessarily reach. Like nobody is going to be perfect in that way, but it's a guideline to say like, Hey, this is, this is who God is, you Mm -hmm. know, and this is who we should strive to be. But if we fall short, it's okay because God loves us and he has grace for us. And that's what I want to receive in terms of my relationship with God. That's how I feel. Like I want to continue to grow closer to God to the point where I feel confident within myself and the uniqueness that he's he's made me into and the skills and and just just as a whole this vessel that he's given me uh I mean there's a reason why if you if you take care of it you live longer yeah. that's the that's the formula everything is so intricately designed even when you look at, down to like women getting pregnant and giving birth that shit is 
fucking weird. It but, is weird but to grow a baby, grow a human a baby. inside of your body but and it feeds off of you for nine months. But even sick. beyond that, when you look at the details, even how your body responds, Shifts, yeah. your, your, it's, it's, and the fact that the human body isn't designed to endure the amount of pain that women endure during pregnancy and, and they don't do. die. And yet we do. It's crazy. And yet we do. And that's the reason why nobody can tell me that God is not real. He's that's, real. And that's what I'm saying. He's that's real. What I'm saying. Nonetheless, nonetheless. I. <laughs> you go. Know, and that's what yeah. I mean. God lives within us. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. God is within me. I know God is. With, he's in with. He's in all of us. He, he created is. us. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, in his image and in his likeness. So with that being known. And even still, we're diverse. Yes. And that's how I know like God is just, he's a, he's a spirit. My goal is to, to live, a, live to my fullest potential in the way that he's created me in every aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. And to uh, live by the morals that I've been taught, the basis of what makes a good person, someone who's compassionate and, and empathetic and understanding and flexible, adaptable, intelligent, like mm -hmm. just the fullest person that I can be. Um, and to simply love. Yeah. To love people. Mm -hmm. That's just that's, to love people. That's my goal. And, and I feel like if I can do all of that, it'll draw me even closer to who I believe God is. Yeah, I agree. And I think that it also, you know why I think that this is so true for people that are kind of like us, like when you're the type of person that is like an anxious person, I think that we find we find more connectedness with God mm -hmm. through the love piece versus the rules yeah. because the rules can make you feel anxious mm -hmm. and it can make you feel like you can't attain connection with God. You can't attain like this this key to heaven yeah. because of you not being good enough. And yeah. I think that when, and this is the reason why people ex like, there are some people that need to experience God through the rules. Like yeah. maybe that is their assignment here on earth that they need to experience it that way for them to have the type of relationship they need. Personally, I don't feel like that makes me and God's relationship thrive. It, it doesn't. That doesn't even sound like a real relationship. That's like a, it, that's like a job. It's a, it's a job. You go to this job. You do what you're supposed to do. There are rules that you're supposed to follow. Like the thing is, is like I think people think of the rules as like creating discipline, but I have to have discipline. Oh, even now, and I'm trying real hard. That shit's hard. But I have to have discipline now. Understanding, like I am angry. Mm. I cannot lash out because I am angry. That's yeah. that's discipline. Because at the end of the day, what matters is you love people. You respect people. Yeah. And that's it. But whether I'm eating whatever the fuck I'm eating or whether I'm, you know, I don't know, some random ass shit that they be making up. Like, mm -hmm. I just like, you know, it don't matter. Yeah. At the end of the day, but I think it has opinion. everything to do with your <laughs> your moral character. Yeah. Character. And who you are as a person. Was that a good nap? <laughs> I was just resting my eyes. <laughs> I wanted us to before we like before we shift because I feel like this definitely has to do with what we were saying. We were going to talk a little bit mm -hmm. about about the aspect of guarding your heart mm -hmm. and um, being protective of who you allow into your heart space and mm -hmm. how that shifts everything for you. Yeah. Um, oh. So I don't know if this necessarily goes with this, but I want to be open about this now that it's over. But um, you all know this, but during the last like month and a half of Mar me and Marcus's engagement, we chose to be abstinent. Oh, yeah. And that was more so. And this is what I mean when I say like, it's what God places on your heart. There are yeah. some people who it, it wouldn't be placed on them, but. I, it was placed on me because of the fact that I made that promise to God when I was younger and mm -hmm. I did not keep it. And yeah. I felt shame attached to sex mm -hmm. and just like enjoying sex and having sex outside of the parameters of that were set yeah. because of the fact that I made this promise when I was so young and I we was unable did. to right. understand like the gravity. Purity rings. <laughs> I, ain't even I didn't even know what I was promising, <laughs> you know? And it's a, it's, I understand the point of the promise. Like it truly it, yeah. is God's protection because after you lose your virginity and you have sex, it you start crazy. to realize yeah. why 
that is a good parameter yeah. to have. Yeah. Like, not that you're damned to hell because you have sex before marriage, but it's also just for your own heart's protection. protection. Yes, yes. And so now I've had to literally renew myself and get myself in a different space of mind um, about what sex is because yeah. now that I'm entering marriage where it's meant to be good and it's meant to be safe and all of these things, like mm -hmm. I have to release and shed from the, the previous experiences oh, wow. yeah. that I've had. Yeah. And I feel like personally that it really did do that for me. That's something that I want to do. I think there's, there's power in, in, um, in abstaining, especially right before marriage, there's a power in sacrifice even. Mm -hmm. Cause even, even in, when you're in your marriage, there are times that you may need to abstain and you're going to have to sacrifice like from having sex because of just even like after you give birth, like if you have kids, mm -hmm. like you can't have sex. So it's mm -hmm. like, it's good to kind of build that practice up. And that was one of the things that Marcus and I talked about. I'm like, I just feel like if anything, it's great practice for mm -hmm. us to not do it because we had never been in a position where we've literally had to not do it. Yeah. Like we had to make a decision that we were not going to yeah. based upon our, our, like us desiring a deeper connection with God yeah. and for, to give God our sex life, to make it holy for marriage yeah. instead of making it us just having sex because we feel like doing it. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a totally different thing. So I personally feel like everybody should do it when you get to a certain point and I don't, I feel like it's kind of hard. You got to be a very special type of person to go your whole relationship without having sex before you get married. <laughs> but for us, that month and a half was great. And I think that it really did renew my heart space Good. because of the fact that, yes, uh, it was rough no, prior I, to. I think that's beautiful. Thank you. I really do think that's beautiful. It's Thanks. very commendable too, that both of you had just this shared goal mm -hmm. yeah and we committed to it and it was hard yeah. it's especially hard when you when already you live, live together, together. yeah <laughs> like what yeah that was horrible but <laughs> we made it through we on other end <laughs> we on other end now love that love that but yes the guarding your heart thing oh. what did you want to share about oh, that th this was actually um triggered by there's this podcast uh Reel that I saw on TikTok is uh, a podcast I'd never heard of. I think they're fairly new. It's called BTTS Podcast. Mm. Um, you guys can go look. They have some really good content. But she was talking about, uh, she was stitching this video of this girl saying that uh, the videos of women making fun of men just aren't funny to her anymore. Mm. And she's noticed this shift in, in her perspective and how she's viewing men. And then that's when I paused and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> like that's when it got real bad for me too. Cause I started watching those damn videos of Princella the queen maker. <laughs> and I literally unfollowed her after that. And I was like, while some of her points may be valid, it's making me hate men. Mm -hmm. And that just isn't me like at all. And I had to pause and, and, basically remind myself of certain truths in my life. Like, mm -hmm. yes, that last relationship was really hard. Mm -hmm. And I paired myself with someone who did not value me. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my mistake. That was my, that was my mistake. Mm -hmm. However, when I look at my track record, I've always chosen very good partners for myself mm -hmm. when I've had the time to get to know them. Yeah. And they never dogged me out like that. They yeah. never treated me poorly. They were always respectful. They were always good men with pretty good character. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. one of them. But even still, when I look at his, that one behavior of, of my first Voldemort, I can even still explain and have empathy for where he was and why he, I still, at the end of the day, know that he was a good man. Mm -hmm. Now, Anyways, I just like Anyways. so I had to like pause and be like, Ayana, this is not representative of all men. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's and really not. We all have to go through those experiences. Like those experiences truly teach us, like going back to the point of like guarding your heart. Yeah. It truly teaches you how to guard your heart to be able to give it to the right person. Like yeah. I say all the time that. I had to go through what I went through prior to Marcus because I would not have been ready to receive yeah. him. And I wouldn't have had the proper boundary set in place so that I can actually 
receive a love that understands and respects boundaries yeah. and whatnot. And so that's the reason why it's so important that you set standards for access to your heart. Yeah. And just like what you're saying, that you allow into your heart and your mind because those things become consuming. And then it it ruins your perspective and your outlook and everything. That's yeah. the reason why social media is like dangerous sometimes. Because the algorithm be algorithm it, it does. And yeah. if you don't set it to get the right type of stuff, you're gonna be receiving all types of crazy things. That's why sometimes like, yes, it's okay to to be be in the space that you're in, but also seek other perspectives yes. and seek things that are out that are past the stage that you're in if you're in a bad phase. And I'm in a bad phase right now. Mm-hmm. I'm coming out of it but nonetheless i'm in a bad phase and i realize i need to start consuming things that are where i want to be yeah because before this before this i would tell people all the time my algorithm was cats mm-hmm. funny videos mm-hmm. food videos and that's what you need to get and- back to <laughs> and that's what you need. you need to get off of men hating Angry TikTok. Man. T- gender war tiktok yeah no you got to get off of that bro it's i'm like how good. the hell did i get here you know who shifted my perspective about a lot of like negativity about mm. men though Marcus because he do not be folding for none of that I cannot say that type <laughs> of stuff in front of him he will definitely go in because he does he, sometimes it's a little left I'll be like hold on a second you're going too far but he I think that we balance each other out a lot mm-hmm. in that area because he will give the perspective of like okay but it's also not just like men that are terrible there are mm-hmm. terrible women terrible too. women and I'm like I have true. to remember it's true yes there are key differences between men and women but a lot of the times it's individuals it's people it's people in general yeah it's a people problem and I think that a lot of times as you know, men or women, we focus solely on our experiences yeah. of if you're a woman that dates men, then obviously you're going to talk negatively or poorly just about men mm. and vice versa for men that are dating women. Yeah. But you have to understand that these are just people problems because even people who are bisexual or lesbian yeah. or gay, they still have issues in the dating world with the in same general. gender. Yeah. So it is literally just a people issue. Like it's, it's just that you go through the process of dating people. Obviously, it never works out until you find the right person. Right. And that's just what it is. At the end of the day, just find your people in friendships, in Hello. romantic relationships. Just find your people, man. That part. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I will say, though, these Chicago men. <laughs> Look, let me. When I say don't generalize, these Chicago men, though. They a little different. They different. But. I mean, I think it's also what you're used to, though, too, because Perfect. I if, am in a small bubble right now. <laughs> if I went, if I was single and I went someplace different, I'd be like, these men are weird. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm from Chicago, so I'm used, used to, to it, yeah. Chicago men. But I've just never seen it like this before. And I've lived. I think you know what it is, though. I feel like it would be like this almost anywhere Mm -mm. at this point in time because of the fact. Oh, you mean just in the time, the time period that we're in, and also the age that we're at now, where it's Uh like the strange people are in the streets, like (laughs) (laughs) the strange people are in the streets. You got to meet people very different types of ways now because you're not going to go to the club or go like to events and meet nice guys nine times out of ten like you got to be very lucky because most of the time you go out and it's like oh my gosh where did you come from what hole did you crawl out no, of for real like ew not ill. <laughs> Ick. i be outside like this is gross no, that's what marcus said marcus is like yeah i feel bad for y'all <laughs> it's like damn you know it's pretty bad okay <laughs> i'm praying for all of my single friends mm, please do prayers please up do. Please what time do. are we at ariel Oh, 54. Okay. We go wrap this rambling. thing good. Rambling. Um, do you have any feels of the week that you want to mention? Uh, do I? Not really, I don't think. No? I don't think so. Oh, Ooh. I have one. Go ahead. Oh, so there's this Japanese animation that I watched mm-hmm. uh, called My Happy Marriage. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Is oh it good? My, it's so good. I cried so much. What does much. it come on? It's like a tragic happy cry. Oh. Uh, it's on Netflix. Oh. It's like- Well, 
Netflix count your effing days. Uh, I will say that because I refuse. <laughs> you can't use your parents' account pissed. no more. Y'all are so disrespectful for that Netflix. Like, they said, what are y'all us. doing? No. Give us our money. No. <laughs> All of y'all freaking streaming websites, whatever y'all are, want to go up on the cost and then y'all want everybody to pay for it. Like that ruins the fun. <laughs> people, we're going to get cable again. F all of this. This is Honestly, ridiculous. I wouldn't be shocked if people did start switching back to cable. Let's revolt. We can all come together and have a revolution, y'all. Right. And we we can go back. This but is anyways, a revolution. Yes, we're about to start a revolution. Yeah. Um, yeah. My fill of the week mm-hmm. is that we're going to Chelsea's fashion show on Saturday. Oh, yeah. So by the time this episode comes out. Oh, no. By the time this episode comes out, yes, you all will know that we're going to Chelsea's Best Show <laughs> this upcoming Saturday. So if you're in Chicago and you want to go, make sure that you all go to Chelsea's page. Um, what's her Instagram? Uh, Chelsea B. Chelsea B. Chelsea B. One two something. Just go on our page. Y'all will find her because we have a video with her on there. Best. But um, but yes, we're going to her fashion show on Saturday at Wonder Museum. So we're super excited about that. So that's my fill of the week. I'm excited to get dressed up and get cute. Yay. Yay. I still got wax on my finger. Uh Uh-oh. I waxed myself this morning. I cannot believe that you do that. What do you mean? It just sounds- It saves money. It just sounds traumatizing. It it only took me uh, like 35, 40 minutes this time. It just sounds- I did a pretty good job. Very traumatizing. It's not that bad. All right, guys. Well, we're about to get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) We love you guys. You can find us on the Tiki Talk. It fill in the blank pod, and then you can watch the lovely visuals by the lovely Asia Lexi Productions on Ooh. YouTube at fill in the blank podcast. You can find us on Instagram at fill in the blank underscore me on Instagram at as told by dot Kayla and Ayana at Ayana dot We love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will catch you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>